In your previous reading, we saw that cultures consist of shared products. These products are not only physical items, but also shared ideas and beliefs. So in each society, there is a degree of conformity around these shared products. But that leads to an important question. How do sociologists explain why there is so much difference of cultural products within a society? For example, just look at the appearance of each of the individuals I will put on the board. Each represent a cultural group, each represented in the wider American society. We have the Amish culture. We have the young urban professional culture, sometimes referred to as yuppies. You also have the college culture, like these Penn State fans. There's the urban or hip-hop culture. You also have a Muslim culture in American society, as well as a redneck culture, like these guys from Duck Dynasty. <laughs> I love that show. Anyway, these shared products that make up each group's culture, both the material culture, like physical items, like the visible dress that we see in the pictures, as well as the immaterial culture, like the values and the beliefs, can be quite varied and often quite different from one group to the next. So how can we say they are all part of just one American society? Well, this is what you will discover when you read the section for today. The main idea that you want to keep in mind is this. There are many elements that all cultures share. Many cultural variations exist, however, and cultures change over time. So as you are reading, there are three questions that you should be able to answer by the time you get to the end of this section. First, what do most cultures have in common with each other? Social scientist George Murdoch discovered from his research that there are common features of all societies. He refers to these as cultural universals. You will not only want to know what a cultural universal is, but you want to take notice to the general categories that are identified. It includes 65 cultural universals. For example, one of the categories is body adornment. That means that every culture, doesn't matter where you are in the world, every culture has shared beliefs and values as to what they determine is right or wrong, good or bad, desirable or undesirable, when it comes to how one adorns their body and in what they find beauty in. Yet, we can also see that there is a great diversity in this one cultural universal as well. Just take a moment and think of the variations of people's values about what is desirable and undesirable when it comes to things such as piercings, body art and hairstyles, to clothing. All of these under the one universal of body adornment. And this leads to the second major question that you will want to answer. And that is, what factors account for variations within a culture? So we see all this variation even in the wider American society. So how do sociologists explain this? This is where sociologists focus on what they define as subcultures and countercultures. And as you read this section, you will want to make sure that you can explain both of these. In fact, some sociologists like Jason Kaufman have broken it down even, even further, now referring to microcultures, which are even smaller than the subculture. The idea is that people will seek out relatively small groups of like-minded people <clears throat> and these are the people that they will spend nearly all of their time interacting with. Interestingly, with the rise of social media, the world has gotten much smaller. Now individuals might choose to not be close to the people they're surrounded by geographically, 
but rather by use of technology choose to associate and share with those who have common norms values and practices one prevalent example among teenagers would be the online gaming communities now finally you will want to answer the question of how does culture change American culture doesn't look anything like it did in the 1950s the five components of culture have gone through a lot of change in the past 60 years including new technologies even changes in language yes we still speak English but when you consider the changes in slang there has been a lot of change my son might go around saying hey that is one sick pickup but he's I'm fairly certain that he is not saying that that pickup has some kind of an illness that is a cultural change in language there are also changes in values in norms and in symbols so how do sociologists explain these changes this is what you want to make sure that you understand from this section now there are a lot of key vocabulary terms in this section so I recommend you take notes using an organizer like this for each of the four main headings in this section make sure that you can identify all of the key vocabulary and be able to give an example for example under cultural universals be able to explain in your own words some of the categories that Murdoch came up with like basic needs communication beliefs technology and arts and leisure now do the same for the other categories